got a couple questions myself uh, concerning church membership, uh, fellowship, uh, breaking of bread, the group of people within the body of the, of the church that we are breaking bread with. Um, 1 Corinthians 5.12 states, For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Who is this group of people, first of all, that God is judging without? And also it goes on to say, Do not ye judge them that are within. Is this saying that we as Christians are permitted to judge those people that are, we are breaking bread with? Yes, it does. Uh, the, the passage deals with two segments of believers. There are believers that are in fellowship. They're continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. Some more steadfastly than others, but the idea here is they're, they're functional within the body of Christ in a local assembly. There are other parties who are saved, but they're outside of the church. And because they're outside of the church, as Christians we have no real uh, business judging them because they're outside of the, of the church. God will judge them. There are two segments of people. One body of believers that are in fellowship, to whom the saints within do have to render judgments at times, and other believers that are outside of that body who are not in a fellowship relationship within a local assembly. All right. Second part of my question uh, concerns uh, 1 Corinthians 5.11, which states, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator, covetous, an adulterer, a railer, a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no not to eat. This is saying that we should uh, you know, boot the person out of church or remove him from fellowship or just remove him from the Lord's Supper. Yeah, from uh, we're, we're talking about with such one, no not to eat. This is specifically taught in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 in relationship to the Lord's Supper. Uh, because there are avenues that are given the believer with the other areas of fellowship, namely prayer, fellowship, and doctrine that will be used as tools to help bridge a party who's maybe out of fellowship for those specific purposes to try to eventually restore that brother. So we don't want to be taking every avenue away from a party who has fallen privy to, to anything that any of us could have fallen privy to. We want to extract them only from the area where the scriptures convey we extract them from, which is the Lord's Supper, but permit the other three elements to retain or be maintained to allow that individual eventually to be restored back to fellowship. So the idea here is that we don't take everything away with such a one we know not to eat. Now it talks about if any man be, and it, can, uh, it lists those items. They are namely continuing in, unrepented of, and if they're in that state then the church from within has to render a judgment and to remove them solely from that aspect of the functionality within the church. But we would obviously try to use prayer, some measure of fellowship, and some measure of teaching to assist that party beyond those circumstances. And the last part of my question deals with uh, Galatians 6.1. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... And that would be a fornicator, he's covetous, he's an adulterer, a railer. Um, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one to spiritual, uh, with the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Uh, at what point are we going to restore this person into fellowship or breaking of bread? You know, there has to be some measure of uh, fruit indicating that the party's complied uh, and, and, and they're getting beyond the circumstance, they're, they're getting help. Okay, be it some measure of counseling, uh, you know, trying to get more fellowship, getting more in God's word. Uh, there, there has to be something showing there to prove that these things have played themselves out favorably, uh, and it's going to take some discernment to render a judgment on that, uh, on that, on that, on, on uh, the church's part to restore that brother back to fellowship. But that's the goal. The whole goal is to restore a brother back to fellowship, not to remove him and extract him and you know, remove every element that could be used on God's part within a local framework of the church to win him back. 
no, we don't want to do that. We want to leave every avenue open possible so that we can use those as bridges to build that party back up. And he notice that he states the spirit of meekness, considering thou thyself dost thou also be tempted. None of us are beyond temptation or falling privy to shortcomings. So when we exercise judgment on a brother or sister, this has to be taken in consideration of our own shortcomings where we could fall privy to uh, different uh, sins in the flesh. So we have to exercise constraint, meekness, it's, it's a balancing act. At the same time, we have to meet the uh, satisfaction on God's part to bring that party back to a position where they're in full fellowship again. All right, and thank you. You bet.